This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. If anything good has happened in your life, that was God. Because God said that goodness of God is going to lead you to change your mind. You're going to look back at all the things that could have, should have, and would have happened in your life, and it didn't happen, and you know that the goodness you experience is not because of you. The goodness you experience is because of God. Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages. With each message that you download and stream, you gain revelation of the fullness of God's grace. The Changing Your World podcast brings you life-changing wisdom right at your fingertips, no matter where you are. Subscribe today on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. This is your world. So let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Ooh, let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. We are changed. Father, we do thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. Speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind, none of me and all of you. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. Jesus, the peacemaker. What is that all about? Jesus, the peacemaker. One of the reasons I want to start here is because, you know, Jesus uh, has been under such attack in our society. People have been working overtime to try to get people to, you know, let Jesus go. And, and you need to let him go because he's the white Jesus or he's the black Jesus. I don't care what color his skin was. He's the Jesus that was responsible for bringing peace between mankind and God. And I'm going to tell you right now, don't you fall for any of that stuff because, listen, the only way to the Father is through Jesus Christ. And so I, I want to teach this today so that you can understand the significance of Jesus in our lives, the significance of, of Jesus in the past, in the present, and also in our future. And so this is very, very important. Take good notes, check this out, and I'll show you how to apply this in your life. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14, he says, and, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto, him, unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Now, he's talking about Jesus, and he tells you right here, that Jesus was born to be a Savior. And he tells you who it is in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So Christ the Lord, born to be a Savior, all right? And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothing, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, talking about there were angels there, and they were praising God, and here's what they were saying. Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Here's what they were saying. We are thanking God that there is now peace on earth. There is peace on earth between God and man. Now, most of the time, people just look at this, you know, as a Christmas celebration 
uh, uh, scripture, but there's something so much more going on here. They're thanking God that there's peace on earth. And so if they're praising God that peace is on earth and referring to Jesus as being, you know, uh, the, 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 the peace that's on the earth, then before there was peace on the earth, what was on the earth before they decided there's peace on earth and goodwill towards men? Well, I want to look at this and we'll talk about that, answer that question. Matthew chapter 1 and 21. Now, notice what they say here about Jesus. He says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. All right, so we just read that Jesus was a Savior, and he's going to save people from their sins. So Jesus the Savior saving people from their sins. But now, how's he going to do this? And what is the deal about this peace on earth? You see, they were announcing that, uh, uh, that peace. They were saying peace is here, peace is here, and, 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 and goodwill towards men from God. There's goodwill that's now coming towards men from God. You see, God was at war against man's sin. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, sin is, is just enmity to, towards God. And, and, and God and man's sin, there was a battle there. Uh, there was a wrath there. And also there was judgment from God. He says we're going to move from judgment from God to get some goodwill from God. You see, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, God had to judge it or he wouldn't be just. And so in the Old Testament, you see a God of judgment. There were certain things that sin brought to pass because man committed sin, and that sin on his life was enmity towards God, and God now had to become a judge. And judgment came from God because of man's sins. There was judgment against people in the Old Testament because of what happened in that Garden of Eden and because of man's sin. But I need you to understand that when Jesus showed up as the peace offering and the angels declared there's now peace on earth, now God's going to give goodwill towards men. You've got to understand that there was a wrath and judgment from God against people in the Old Testament that is now totally unjustified and wrong in the New Testament. So now, why would it be wrong for God to be judge in the New Testament and judgment comes from God to man in the New Testament? Well, here's the reason why. Because Jesus ended the war between God and man because of sin. Jesus made all of the difference. Jesus became the game changer. And listen, you know, you got to be careful when you listen to people that talk against Jesus and leave Jesus alone and don't have anything to do with Jesus. You remember when uh, uh, Jesus was on the earth and, and he was talking to them about revela revelation knowledge. He said, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And um, they began to talk to him and he said that, and, and Peter opened his mouth and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. You remember that? And uh, Jesus, you know, congratulated him in front of all the, the disciples, said, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my Father revealed this to you. And on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against thee. And Jesus began to talk to them about he, how, how he must come to die. And then Peter opened his mouth and said, you don't have to die. And then Jesus said, Satan, I rebuke you. What? Peter went from revelation knowledge from heaven to speaking as motivated by the devil. Now, there are a lot of people in the world today that are speaking as motivated by the devil. Somebody says, how, how can you say that? Because when you're saying something that is against God's will, when you're saying something against God's plan, if you're saying something against what God has said and what God has established, then you're speaking something that is against God's will and, and Jesus called it Satan. Jesus called him the devil because of what he was saying, uh, because of what he was, what he was speaking. And uh, so, 
Uh, let me let me see if I can. That's a that's a powerful scripture. I, I think that as we begin to to look at what's going on here, you'll begin to see what I'm saying today. How we cannot allow our lives to be subject to people who don't know God. And when people don't know God, they'll open their mouths up and they'll say something that, that, uh, that they don't understand. In verse 22, he says, then Peter, uh, Matthew 16, verse 22, then Peter took him and began, then Peter took him, took Jesus and began to rebuke him. Now, why was he rebuking Jesus? Just stay with me for a moment. Verse 21, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief scribes and that he would be killed and he would be raised again the third day. So Jesus was saying this. 22, then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Well, Jesus just said this was going to happen. He said, it's not going to be unto thee. But he turned and he said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savoreth not the things that be of God, but those things that be of man. This is coming out of Peter's mouth, and Jesus is recognizing that is not from God. That is not from God. And so you're going to hear people talk about, oh, well, you ought not to have anything to do with the Bible because it's a white man's book. Uh, yeah, people use the Bible to manipulate folks, but it's not a white man's book. It's a book for human beings, you understand? And if you buy that, that fable that, well, Jesus is a white man, leave Jesus alone, and, and, and people cursing Jesus, well, you're, 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 you're going against the only one that can help you. He's the only one. Jesus is the peacemaker. He is the maker of peace. And so Jesus ended the war between God and man, and he made all the difference. So the gospel is the good news that God isn't angry with you. The gospel is the good news that God isn't angry at you, that he loves you, and that he wants uh, to extend all of his blessings towards you, that God loves you, that God forgives you, God's not angry at you, God's not angry at you, God's not angry at you, and God wants to spend his time releasing his blessings towards your life. That's the good news of the gospel. Jesus paid the price to redeem us, uh, to restore us, to restore the friendship between God and man before Adam and Eve sinned. Jesus paid the price so that could be possible to stop God's wrath upon sin. And Jesus paid the price. So it, today we can have a father and not someone that's going to judge us and pass judgment towards us, uh, not, not now in, the, in this period of grace, and, and he's going to be a father that, that's not mad at you. And, and please understand, God's not mad at you. Please understand, God is not mad at you. God is no longer angry. God is not even in a bad mood because Jesus is the peacemaker. Let me show you these scriptures real quick. First John chapter 1, verses 1 through 2. Jesus paid the price to redeem us and to stop God's wrath. Somebody said, well, God's mad at you. That's why you had the car wreck. God's mad at you. That's why you got cancer. God's mad at you. That's why you lost your baby. And people live under that kind of condemnation. That's, that's not so that, that's not so in the New Testament. Now look at this. First John, listen y'all. First John chapter two, verses one through two. He says, my little children, these things write unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Underline that, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So he says, Jesus is the propitiation. What is that word propitiation? What does that mean? Jesus is the compensation, or Jesus is the payment for our sins. Jesus is the propitiation, or he's the compensation, or he's the payment, or he's the peace offering. 
The angels begin to declare peace on earth because of Jesus, because Jesus was the peace offering between, between God and man's sin. And so you need to understand that Jesus is the compensation and the peace offering uh, between God and the wrath that he had with man's sin and the judgment that would come because of man's sin and the, and the anger uh, from heaven because of man's sin. And Jesus began, was the payment. He's the compensation for that, so that won't exist anymore. So here's the good news. Jesus is your compensation. Jesus is your payment for all of your sins. You notice, he has provided the payment for you. Look at this in St. John chapter 129. See, you can't do this without Jesus. God can't even. I mean, that reconciliation would not be possible if it were not for Jesus. And isn't it crazy how people are, uh, even today, attacking Jesus, trying to tell people don't believe in Jesus. He said, the next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, referring to Jesus, which taketh away the sins of the world. So Jesus is not only the compensation and the peace offering for, you know, the sins of people who are in the church right now, but he has paid for the sins of the whole world. Now, that's powerful. He's paid for sins of the whole world. You got to understand that in this in this age, in this time, in the time of the New Testament, God is not going to beat people down, strike curses on you, make you sick, throw you in a ditch somewhere to, to get you to change your mind and be saved. God's going to use goodness to bring people to change their mind and repent. God's going to use goodness. Look at Romans chapter 2 and 4. God's going to use goodness He's going, to use, he's going to use goodness. God's going to be good to people who are not even saved so he can get you to change your mind. God is going to use goodness to get you to change your mind about things. Look what he says in verse 4. Or despise thou the riches of his goodness, or the forbearance and the long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. That word repentance means to change your mind, literally to change your mind. So I don't know where where your mindset is. Maybe you have a mindset that says, I don't believe in God. Maybe you have a mindset that says, I don't want to have anything to do with God, or, or I don't want to have anything to do with the church, and I don't want to have anything to do with the Bible, I don't want to have anything to do with Jesus, I don't want to have anything to do with the white Jesus. I don't know what your mindset is. But I'm going to tell you something. If anything good has happened in your life, that was God. Because God said that goodness of God is going to lead you to change your mind. You're going to look back at all the things that could have, should have, and would have happened in your life, and it didn't happen, and you know that the goodness you experience is not because of you. The goodness you experience is because of God. And he says, I'm going to use this goodness to bring you to repentance. So God is just, but Jesus paid that price. Look at 1 Corinthians 6 and 20. God is just, but Jesus paid the price. Jesus, you, I, I, I want to, I know I'm being repetitive. I hope I'm not going too fast, but I need you to understand that, you know, he is the peacemaker. Take Jesus out of the equation. We are all doomed to hell. We're all under a judge. Look what he said, verse 20. For you are bought with a price. Stop right there. I need you to know you were bought with a price. You were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Go ahead and give thanks to God in your body, and go ahead and give thanks to God in your spirit, which are God's. Why? You were bought with a price. Jesus is that compensation. Jesus is that peace offering. Jesus is that payment for all of your sins. You were bought with a price. If you understand that, say amen. So he totally changed the way God deals with man. Jesus did. Jesus totally changed the way that God deals with mankind. And that's what these angels were singing about. Peace on earth. Now there's going to be goodwill towards men instead of wrath of God on earth and, you know, judgment coming as a result of what they did wrong, a curse upon them because of what they did wrong. Now, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 and 18. Let's get into this now. 
2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 through 18. Notice what he says here. He says, therefore, if any man be where? In Christ. Now, it, it, what he says is, if anybody got born again, if you're now born again and you're saved, you're in Christ. So he says, if any man be in Christ or be saved or be born again, he says, now that you're born again, you're in Christ, he is a new creature. He says, the old things are passed away. Behold, what? All things are become, what? New. Verse 18, and all things are of God, if you're in Christ, God who hath reconciled us to himself. To reconcile means to restore back to friendship, to restore the relationship that was once broken and hindered. He said, God who hath reconciled us to himself. How did he do that? How did God reconcile us to himself? He said, by Jesus Christ. He, see, even God could not accomplish reconciliation except there be a Jesus Christ. He says, by Jesus Christ and hath given to us, he said, he gave to us the ministry of reconciliation. And so now my job is to go and announce to people, hey, peace is on earth. Jesus has come. Through Jesus, we can be reconciled with God. God's not mad at you anymore. God's not going to get you. God's not going to cause you to have a car wreck. God's not going to kill you. God's not going to get you back for something that you did. Come on back to God. That's the ministry that we've been called to in, in, in essence because of what Jesus has done. Now, to reconcile again is to simply make friendly or to bring back into harmony. God is not upset. I keep saying that. I'm going to say it a lot because I, I, I know a lot of people who quit praying, who quit coming to church, who quit listening to the Word because they think God's upset with them. Listen to me carefully now. You know, I used to preach that if God didn't judge America, he would have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. But now I understand that if he did judge America, he'd have to apologize to Jesus. Because of Jesus, God is no longer, not at this time, during this period of grace, because of Jesus Christ, there's peace on earth, goodwill towards man. And so if God, if God did judge America harshly and rain down fire and all that other stuff, a lot of people, a lot of people think that the pandemic is from God. A lot of people think that that's God's judgment. It came from God, and God's going to show you he's going to kill a whole bunch of people, and a whole bunch of people going to die of COVID, and God's going to get you, and God's going to get you. No, 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 no. Because of Jesus, God can no longer deal with man like that. Because of Jesus, God is no longer a judge. He's a father. And if he judged America like some people say, he would have to apologize to Jesus because Jesus made the difference in the way God relates to mankind. And this is what the angels were praising him for. Jesus made the difference in how God relate to mankind. Now you go back, you go back in the old covenant and you go look at how God dealt with man before Jesus came. Oh, it was bad. It was bad. I mean, thousands of people died. Uh, in, in Israel, wondering, and folks died all the time. Rain, the rain of fire came down and, and burnt up a whole lot of folks. People died, man. I mean, a lot of people died because of the judgment of God that came because that's how God dealt with uh, man at the time. But not so. Jesus changed the way God dealt with man. Now, let me show you something real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 21. I'm going to make this statement, and I want you to get a hold of it. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Jesus' righteousness made us right with God. Jesus' righteousness made us right with God. Now, how do you do that? How do you say that? Well, look at this scripture. For he hath made him, he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, now notice here, he made Jesus sin who had never sinned so that we could be made righteous and we've never been right. Wow. We didn't become righteous. We were made righteous because of Jesus. We hope your life has been enriched by today's message. The entire message series can be purchased at Creflo Dollar Ministries eStore. Visit us at store.cdmcanada.ca. 
Call us toll-free at 1-877-556-0668, or if it's more convenient, email us, info at cdmcanada.ca.